Okay, we are back, and my next step is going to be to create a door that can fill in this doorway we have between our front and our back rooms. Now, there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could make a swinging door. We could make a door that slides upward. What I'm going to do is build kind of a pocket door, in this case, a chain link fence that will just slide out of the way. To do that, though, it would be nice if I had a pocket just so that we didn't accidentally see that mesh just, you know, sort of slide through the wall. So I'm going to hit W to hide out my static meshes, just to sort of simplify the view. Then I'm going to jump over to brush wire frame mode, and I need to jump out of game mode so that we can kind of see what's going on here. So let's go ahead and switch that off. Also, I'm going to tap W one more time and verify that I am indeed in brush wire frame mode, and that gets rid of all that other stuff. Now, if we take a look, what I've got here is our subtractive brush, which is currently carving out the doorway. I'm going to add a couple of edges to this. Basically, I want to add a pocket on the right-hand side that our door could slide into, and then a little groove over here on the right that could be used to kind of seat the gate as it closes. So let's start off by jumping into geometry mode with this brush selected. And this is a really quick process, but before we begin, make sure that down in the lower right-hand corner of your interface in the console bar that your drag grid settings are pulled to 4. That will make this a lot easier. Now, I'm going to grab one of these corner edges here along the side of our brush and I'm just gonna hit the split button now you see that adds an extra edge we need to get this position properly though so I'm gonna jump over to my viewport options and set my viewport type to top for just a moment now I'm gonna click on this vertex hold down control and grab this vertex and currently these are nicely snapped to the grid what I'm gonna do is move these eight units to the left, that's two grid spaces because we're using a, a grid setting of four and that'll work there. Now let's switch back over to a perspective view and I'm gonna grab this edge yet again and we'll split it a second time. Now let's jump back over to a top view. Now I'll grab this vertex here at the top, hold down control and grab the vertex here at the bottom and these vertices I'm going to move to the right, just four units. And if we jump back over to the perspective view, you'll see that what we've done is we've created these two edges that wrap all the way around our door. Now we can use the extra detail we've added to create the pocket that we're going to need for our gate. So I'm going to grab this face right here in the middle of the stripe on the right hand side. I'm going to switch over to extrude mode. So make sure over in your Geometry Tools window, you click the Extrude Radio button. And then using my Translation widget, I'm just going to drag a pocket into the wall. Now, it doesn't really matter how far back you go. In the end, all you really want is for the player to see a recession. You know, if the gate ends up kind of going through a wall that's hidden from player's view, that's fine. I wouldn't worry about that. On the opposite side, though, I want a little bit of a groove that can kind of hold on to the gate, just sort of a, something to show that the gate's supposed to close and sort of lock into it. So we're going to extrude this in as well. So I'll just go ahead and pull this with the translation widget, and it looked like that went about eight units instead of just four. So I'm going to switch over to edit mode, and we'll slide that back just one little click like so. And that's all I want to do there. But if we switch over to the top viewport, we could if we're feeling just you know that kind of cool we could grab the vertices here let me make sure that I'm moving in world mode so I'm gonna jump up to the main toolbar and set my reference coordinate system to world and we'll slide these vertices to the left to grab these vertices and slide them to the right so now that that pocket's got kind of a beveled look to it now if we jump back over to a perspective view yet again and then we get out of brush wire frame mode actually we can get out of geometry mode too at this point Let's switch back over to Lit. We still don't see the results of this. We've got to rebuild our geometry in order to do that. So I'm going to click Build Geometry. And we get a warning about our lighting, and uh, our lighting all disappears. So I'll just switch to Unlit mode for a moment. And you'll notice that because I didn't have a material selected, we're getting that blue checker all over the inside of our pockets, which is no good. Now to fix that, I am going to do kind of, it's kind of a trick. I'm going to select a surface, hold down the Alt key, and right-click on it, and then come over to any other surface, still holding Alt, I'm going to left-click on it, and that's kind of like copy-pasting materials. Now, the 
alignment for these textures is a little bit off. In this case, I'm going to go with it. It put like a little metal track here on the inside, which almost looks appropriate if our gate is supposed to kind of lock up inside there. So still holding Alt, I'm just going to left click on all these surfaces. These look a little weird as well. If you wanted to take a moment and fix that by playing with the alignments, you could. But in the end, I'm anticipating all of this being in dark shadow and the player's never going to see it anyhow. Now, we still need to rebuild our lighting to see the final variant of this. So what I'm going to do is take just a moment. Ooh, check this out. Down here at the bottom, it looks like I missed some. Let's hold down Alt and left click here. And then we'll look straight up. Did I get it? Yep, I got to do up here too. Left click here. Those might not have been so noticeable, but I would have known they were there, and it would drive me crazy. So let's rebuild our lighting. You're going to notice a quick pause in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and bring back our static meshes, click the Build button, and you're going to notice a little jump while the build completes. Okay, we are back, and the level has had its lighting rebuilt. Let's come over here and take a peek. So that's still got some illumination back inside of it, which is not really a problem. It still looks whole enough, and we're going to have that filled up with a sliding gate anyway. And this is all looking good. So what I want you to do is go ahead and save your level, and then when we come back, we'll talk about adding in our interp mesh, our object that is actually going to slide back and forth to, uh, to serve as our gate, and we'll handle that in just a moment. So that's going to wrap things up for this video.